Hello everyone and welcome to the Gamer Guides channel. In this video we're going to guide you through the Bramblespine Boneyard in Enshrouded. This is one of the most maze-like dungeons in the game, and navigating it can be a bit overwhelming at first, especially since you have a limited amount of time before the shroud consumes you. But with the right combination of skills and consumables, you should be able to get through it without having to worry about the shroud. You can see on the map here that the dungeon is located just to the north of Mistbury Catacombs, or southwest from the capital of Pikemead's Reach, in the Revelwood region. If you don't stumble on the dungeon while exploring, you'll eventually be directed here by the Rumble in the Catacombs quest. The easiest way to find the entrance is to fast travel to the Revelwood Ancient Spire, then glide down into the Shroud to the northeast. Once you're inside, be sure to activate this respawn flame, which you can also use to reset the shroud timer. There are a few things you can do to increase your maximum time in the shroud. One of the easiest is consuming a shroud survival flask, which will add an extra two minutes to your max time in the shroud. It's important to note that you need to use this before you enter the shroud, or while you're standing next to a respawn flame, since you can't use it to extend the timer once you're in the shroud. In terms of skills, you can further increase the max time in the Shroud with the Inner Fires and Relentless Flame skills. Both of these can be found in the Survivor's skill tree, and they'll give you an extra 7 minutes in the Shroud when combined. There's also the Purification skill which can be found between the Tank and the Warrior trees. This one gives you an extra 5 seconds of Shroud time whenever you kill an enemy with a melee weapon. An equivalent skill for a Mage class is Shroud Filter. This has a 15% chance to trigger a small flame burst that restores 30 seconds of Shroud time. Shroud Filter is arguably more powerful, but don't underestimate how useful Purification can be. You can easily restore a good chunk of Shroud time after killing groups of weaker enemies, such as Critters. So now that we've got the prep work out of the way, let's get stuck into the walkthrough. The first thing you should be aware of is that you'll need some lockpicks to get through a few gates in this dungeon, so you'll need to craft some beforehand or bring some metal scraps with you. There are Shroud enemies throughout this dungeon, including some of the tougher variants with shields. The best way to deal with these as a melee class is to parry their attacks to stagger them, and then hit them when they're staggered. If you do this enough, you'll eventually lock them into a stun, and you can finish them off. If you're a ranged class, there's plenty of space to kite the enemies around the room. If you try going through this door first, you'll find that there's no way through. Before you can get through, you need to find a button upstairs to open the gate. By this point in the game, you should be familiar with these electrical puzzles. All you need to do is jump over them to avoid being hit, and look for a path that they're blocking. In this case, the button can be found just to the left here. Now that the button is activated, you can go down the hole opposite to get through the gate that was blocked. You'll find another button puzzle here, and we spent a long time trying to figure this one out, only to realize that it's currently bugged. It looks similar to other puzzles where you just need to stand on the platform to raise a gate, then shoot the button to keep it open and loop what's inside. But until it's fixed, we'll have to leave it. In this next room you'll find a few more shroud enemies, including a flying wraith. These are especially annoying for melee classes since it's difficult to hit them in melee, but you should be able to grind them down with a spare ranged weapon while avoiding their magic missiles. So once you've dealt with those, head to the northwest part of the room and open the door to find a button on the other side. You'll need a torch or another light source to see things properly in these darkest areas of the dungeon. When you go back to the center of the room, you'll find that the gate to the south is now open. It's easy to get lost in this next part since there are quite a few rooms that have broken walls. Most of the rooms here are empty, aside from the odd lootable cache that may contain a torch if you need one. You'll also find a Shroud Reset Timer here, which you can activate to recover some Shroud Protection, but you're unlikely to need this if you invested in the skills that we mentioned earlier. The main thing you need to do here is follow the path through the broken walls until you find a ladder leading to the next floor up. There are two main doors on this floor, but only one of them can be opened without a lockpick. You don't need to waste a lockpick on the other door though, because there's another way inside the room, which we'll show you now. So this is the door to the room that was locked from the other side. You need to shoot the spore pod and wait for it to expire before you go through. 
On the other side, you'll find a chest that contains the Weathered Stone Block, which is the item that you need to complete the Rumble in the Catacombs quest. There's a bit of a trap set up in here, with another Spore Pod and a Critter Nest ready to ambush you. Now that you have the Weathered Stone Blocks, there's one more room that you need to complete, which is just next to this one. There's a Thunder Brute, a Flying Wraith, and a couple more Shroud enemies through the next door, so be ready for the toughest fight in the dungeon as you kite the enemies around the room. I made quite a few mistakes in my playthrough here, but in general, it's a good idea to kill the weaker enemies first, then focus on killing the Wraith with range damage. The Thunder Brute attacks are actually easy to avoid if you keep it chasing you, and so as soon as it reaches your position, it will use a slow kick attack that you can easily run around. Keep this up as you grind through the Wraith, and be ready to dodge away from its magic missiles. Once you've killed everything in the room, all that remains is for you to loot the nearby sarcophagus and then make your way back to the respawn flame to reset your shroud protection. The loot from this dungeon isn't anything special, but it can be a good place to grind torn cloth from the shroud enemies and you'll get a decent amount of XP along the way, not to mention the shroud cores and thunderbrute head that you can loot at the end. I hope this video was helpful, I know I was lost the first time I came to this dungeon. If you still need help, or you're looking for other Entrouded Guides, be sure to check the link in the description for our detailed walkthroughs at GamerGuides.com.